Good morning. Welcome to Love's United Methodist Church. We're glad you have joined us for this time of worship. As with last week, we're going to have a briefer devotion this morning rather than the full on service. Uh, this Sunday, I will be at Lake Junalusco for our annual re- conference that we have every year. I started to say required annual conference. It actually is uh, that we have each year. So I will be there. We will have a guest pastor here in the pulpit uh, David Barrier from Oak Grove, Moravian, our sister church down the road, you might say. And then I will say this, that on the 25th, a week from this Sunday, will be my last Sunday in the pulpit here at Love's. Three brief years, uh, tumultuous sort of years in some ways, you might say, as we uh, worked our way through COVID and all of the changes and the, the schism and the larger denomination and everything that's going on. But I will be ending my time here on the 25th and will be going to Maple Springs United Methodist on Renola Road in Winston-Salem, uh, beginning there the 1st of July. I do want to say thank you for being here, for the continued support of Love's United Methodist Church. And I pray that Moving on, we will be the church that God has called us to be, that we will be here for another 232 years and proclaiming the good news of Jesus. As we begin our time together today, let us go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, who comes to us in breath, visit us from the thrones of heaven. Set us aflame with amazement and joy and You open our paths to new visions and guide our feet to deeper wisdom. Give us faith, Lord, to to trust your presence. Give us faith to be the people you've called us to be. Be with us during this time of devotion this morning. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. Today is also Father's Day that we recognize in the United States. I know that can be one of those um, emotional kinds of days. Um, Where where do you draw the line with that? Because there might be some folks who were never father. Uh, Many who have lost their earthly fathers. Perhaps there are some who didn't have a good relationship with their earthly father and they have a hard time identifying calling God father. We realize there are a range of emotions all around, not 
Usually not quite as much around Father's Day as there is Mother's Day, as we well know. But there is a range of emotions with that. But I would like for us to just think about that as Abba, which is that Hebrew word for father, almost like a Papa or Daddy. It's that affectionate sort of term, not the more proper father, but the more um, familial and familiar, shall we say, that intimate sort of term of, of your Daddy, of your Papa. If we can think about it in those terms of God, our Father, of us being able to say, Abba, Father, Daddy, I need you. And we honor you with all of that. So I would like to wish those who are uh, viewing a happy Father's Day, Abba, Papa, a Daddy's Day, no matter what your relationship may have been or may be with those for whom you may be father or your own father, or if you never were a father figure perhaps in your life. But the text I want to share for the devotion this morning, since I will be uh, wrapping up my time here at Love's in the very near future, as I said, uh, coming next week, the 25th, will be my last Sunday here. Preliminarily, I do want to sort of set the stage for next Sunday, shall we say, and also as sort of a wrap up for the time here spent at Love's these three years that I've been here. So I want us to hear these words from... Um, Paul writing to the Corinthians. This is the first uh, letter to the Corinthians. So it's 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I'll be reading verses 1 through 5. And Paul writes these words. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. But I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and proclamations were not with plausible words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. And this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Paul is coming to the church in Corinth. This is the first century. They didn't have a 232-year history to draw on. They are new to the faith. And Paul finds the church in a bit of a mess, shall we say. And when he comes to them, he is saying, I come to you not in these lofty words of wisdom. I don't have all the answers to everything is, is basically what we can infer uh, looking at the words, our interpretation of that. I don't have all the answer to these things, he's saying. I'm not coming to you in this great wisdom, these lofty words and, and uh, all, all of this fancy sort of stuff. I'm coming to you with the very basics. Christ and him crucified. That's the way I came to Love's three years ago. That's the way I leave Love's here in another week or so. Coming to you, not in lofty words of wisdom, but knowing and believing and pointing us to one thing that is Jesus Christ and him crucified. I know the church has been having periods of ups and downs ever since Paul wrote these words to the church in Corinth 2,000 years ago, nearly. And we continue to have the ups and downs. We, we look at the very things that are happening right here, the schism in the United Methodist Church. When 20% of the churches in our conference alone have disaffiliated uh, within the past couple of months, uh, joining either the global Methodist Church or becoming an independent church or aligning with another denomination. That is 20% of the churches. We had 958 churches in the Western North Carolina Conference that we we're a part of. 192 disaffiliated, that's 20%. But we also realize in life there is that 80-20 rule in there. There's that 80-20 rule. So 20% of the churches were taking up about 80% of the time, effort, and energy of the rest of 
the conference, shall we say. We pray for those who have disaffiliated. These are our brothers and sisters in Christ. We want nothing but the best for them. But we also pray for the 80% who stayed in the United Methodist Church because we are a connectional church. We come together as one body, proclaiming exactly what Paul is saying to the Corinthians here. I came to you not with all of the answers, not to fix all of the problems, not to say, oh, when that next guy come, he's going to have all comes, he's going to have all the answers. That's not it at all. What we do is we come proclaiming Jesus Christ and him crucified. When we can keep our eyes turned upon Jesus, there is nothing that this church can't do or overcome or be in the future. This is who we are called to be as the body of Christ, to come together. In a, in a few weeks, you'll be seeing another face here, uh, assuming that continue to do the online services the way we've done them these past three years. I'm grateful. I'm just eternally grateful for the, the help that has come alongside me these past three years. Uh, you, you see each Sunday when you view these services, the names of Debbie and Lee Witkowski, you don't see them on the screen because they are recording uh, separately, not here live in person in the, in the sanctuary when we uh, put the recordings together. The music you hear, the beautiful organ or sometimes piano, occasionally a guitar in there as well, the beautiful music you hear that, that accompanies Debbie and Lee, is Aaron Shows, and he is a fabulously talented young man who has shared his beautiful gift of music that we can bring to you for the time of worship. Worship is not just uh, words from a talking head. It's not just words, as Paul says, coming to you in lofty words of wisdom with all the answers to all the ills, but rather worship is that whole piece of of the liturgy, of prayer, and especially of music, bringing to us this full picture of what it means to be in worship. And I'm eternally grateful for the, the work that Debbie and Lee have done and the connection that they have had with Aaron to be able to, to bring this music to us. The technology that's available to do that, just, you know, not that many years ago, we wouldn't have been able to bring a service to you like this. Who knew that I would spend so much time talking into my uh, handheld electronic device, my iPhone, and to record a message and put it all together and to do uploads and downloads. And, you know, there's language I didn't even know to use until a few years ago. But we have had this time together. I value this time together to be together in this season. It's been a challenging season for many of us. It is a season of ups and downs, but isn't all of life a season of ups and downs? But if we stay focused, if we continue to have our focus on what Paul is writing here to the church in Corinth, then there's no limit as to who we can be as the church moving forward. I want to read these words again. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom. His way of saying, I didn't come with all the answers. I didn't come with a, a magic formula saying, do X, Y, and Z, and you'll have this many more people in worship, or you'll be able to do this, or you'll be able to do that. But he goes on to say, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's the reason I, I often, as we're doing the videos, will we'll, um, focus in on that beautiful stained glass in the chancel area of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, which is just hours before his own crucifixion. That, that beautiful stained glass comes to us on what we would call Maundy Thursday, that night of the new mandate that Jesus gives his disciples, that you love one another. Can we do that? 
And it was after giving them that mandate that you love one another that he goes out to the Garden of Gethsemane, knowing that it's just hours before he goes through the torturous, humiliating, agonizing death on the cross. It may be Friday, as the expression goes, but Sundays are coming. And when we keep our eyes turned on Jesus, we know that we can live into when Sundays are coming because we are an Easter people. Paul does not use that terminology, we are Easter people, but he infers that by the very words, I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified and resurrected. That's who we are as a community of faith. I came to you in weakness and fear and much trembling. In other words, I didn't have all the answers. The next person didn't, is not going to have all the answers, just like the last person didn't have all the answers. But when we keep our eyes turned on Jesus, there is no limit to who we can be as the church. My speech and proclamation were not with plausible words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the spirit and of power so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. So I pray that as I wrap up my time here at Love's, and again, next week we'll be back to the, the full service, the last service, in that text, I'll be using um, Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8 or 9. I can't remember. 1 through 8. Uh, Isaiah 6, 1 through 8, uh, that we'll look at next week, with, with, again, with a, a, a full service, and it'll be the final parting service. It's a bittersweet time. We have to fully admit that, that it's a bittersweet time. Anytime there is change, it's a bittersweet time. I've been here three years, and two of those years we really operated under the constraints of, of COVID and thinking, good grief, can it get any worse? Well, you know, if not for COVID, we wouldn't have done these online services. When we look for that silver lining, we realize there are ways we are still the church no matter what the constraints may be, and we've lived into that as best we could, not with words of wisdom or knowing all the, the and get, uh, coming up with answers to all the questions of life. But we come pointing to Jesus and him crucified. If we know that, if we continue to move in that direction, no matter what a, better sweet time, a bittersweet time of, of departure may be, that we will be more than okay. We will be who we're called to be, children of God, followers of Jesus. That's what we're called to be, to follow Jesus and to do. Follow Jesus, make disciples, transform the world. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the beauty of this day. This time to be together for a, a short devotion. But to be reminded that we come not having all the answers or with plausible words of wisdom or or, or whatever the case might be, but that we continually point to Jesus, the perfecter of our faith, that we do have all the answers we need. So we thank you for this time to be together here at Love's, the times that we have shared in our online worship, the times to worship for the beauty, through the beauty of, of music, we thank you for the technology that's available to us that we're able to put services together like this. We thank you for this day, the day that many honor as Father's Day. For those who are missing their fathers, be with them. For those who wanted to be fathers and never were, be with them. For those who may have a strained relationship with a father or a father figure or with a, a child, be with them. But let us always turn to you Abba, Papa, our Heavenly Father. All this we pray in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen.
and now receive this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.